thank you. Um, I, I find myself somewhat of a, 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 a late comer to the digital party, so you'll have to excuse me if I'm using very out-of-date phrases and words. I wasn't even sure once I'd submitted the title that digital outreach is still in vogue, but uh, that's what I'm calling it today. Uh, so we're starting off here with a, a picture of, well, me, looking confused on site with a computer. Um, and uh, the Thames Discovery Programme, for those of you who don't know it, is a community archaeology project uh, based obviously in London. We work in the intertidal zone. Now, right from the beginning of the project in 2008, um, and very much driven by our outreach officer at the time, Lorna Richardson, uh, the development of a website as a key part of the project uh, was sort of implemented very, very early on. So within the first couple of months of the project actually being up and running, the website, which was uh, designed and developed uh, with LP Archaeology and is also still hosted by LP, uh, was online. And these were the reasons why uh, this was seen as a key part of our project. We were HLF funded um, and we had a uh, target, a quite high target to meet of uh, engaging or interacting with 20,000 Londoners over the three years of our project. Now, in the end, uh, actual personal interaction did count for around uh, a third of that number, um, but we decided quite early on that we would need a website uh, in order to be able to reach that kind of figure. Um, the, the website was also designed very much as a project hub, so a place that we could store information, a place that we could disseminate information, um, and also something that would use lots of different kinds of media, so uh, still photography, film, uh, some limited use of sound, um, and to encourage public contribution to the website. So the idea being that it wasn't simply a website that was designed for us to tell people about things, it was something that other people could contribute information and articles to. Um, and it also was, uh, the way it was designed with the software and so on, is a very cost-effective uh, system. So we used, uh, we are still using uh, text pattern as our content management system. Uh, we have a, a reliance on uh, external services to hold um, various media, so Flickr, Vimeo, YouTube, and so on. I'm not sure if mashups is a, is a bingo word today. I was wondering whether that would come up or whether it's no longer in vogue. I don't know, but uh, that's the word that we were using. Um, and we also have a blog section. It's known as the Frog Blog, um, which the name was first coined by our project director in 2007. Frog stands for Foreshore Recording and Observation Group. So these are our volunteers, and the idea is that the Frog, the frog, blog, the frog blog is very much uh, for them and about them. So, um, in 2010, our project website won uh, the British Archaeological Award for the best representation of archaeology in the media. So, uh, we rather, we're rather proud of having beaten both Time Team and Radio 4 uh, to this coveted prize. Um, and at, in 2010, again, a relatively early stage of our project to have such a fantastic acknowledgement of a a website that we very much hoped is, was doing a good job and continues to do so. <coughs> it has changed quite considerably over time. It's been a very organic uh, process, the, um, the sort of development and formation of this website. So it's had a number of different uh, pages and sections added to it over time as we've uh, got funding to do different things, as we've come up with different ideas. Uh, so, for example, um, the Riverpedia section was developed as a result of a grant from University College London's Public Engagement Unit. And the idea behind that was to create a community research hub. So the Riverpedia section being uh, a place where you could, you could hopefully find answers to everything you ever wanted to know about the river but were afraid to ask. So it was, it was driven by the production of a research uh, framework. So we, we basically put a whole series of questions out and ask people to have a think about whether they could write for the website uh, longer articles, so not just short blogs, but actually longer uh, pieces of uh, community research. Uh, the Discover section was also a sort of later development of the website, um, again, very much driven by the outreach uh, sort of department of our project uh, under, under Mike Weber. So Mike's idea was that we needed a more uh, accessible section of the website, so somewhere to hold information that was not 
quite as archaeologically specific um, and maybe more family focused, more family facing. So the Discover section was developed to try and sort of cover that uh, part of our potential audience. And finally, the website was also archived, uh, has also been archived with the British Library. So we have a, a repository which is keeping an eye on it. Um, digital outreach. Now, we started our project in 2008, as, a, as I have no need to tell this audience, there have been uh, huge developments and changes since that uh, period of time. Uh, with Facebook, if nothing else, we started off just with a Facebook group. We were pre-page. Um, we've ended up with uh, a whole range of different things which I'm going to go on to talk about. Um, you can see here a, a quote from Lorna from our evaluation report in 2011 about the original sort of digital strategy, uh, uh, so her original thinking about Facebook and social media, which was a way of uh, broadcasting uh, information. Now we have we've changed our focus slightly over time as regards social media. Um, we also developed a, uh, in response to our volunteers' requests, a private online area for them to have discussions. So a lot of our uh, nearly 400 volunteers are not regular uh, internet users and are certainly not Facebook friendly, Twitter friendly, that it's not their, it's not their cup of tea. So we developed a, 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 a Ning network for them, which is off uh, public web. Uh, where they can hold their own conversations, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end. So, uh, being an HLF project, um, and as we still uh, are very interested in evaluation, we we're interested in finding out what people thought about uh, the various different parts of our projects, the website being one. So, in 2011, we had an independent evaluation of the project by Nicola Bell, um, and one of the questions that she asked our uh, Fortune Recording and Observation Group volunteers was about the website and about our sort of online presence. So these were the results from uh, 2011. As you can see, a really strong response to the project website. So people are finding that, or were finding that in 2011, very useful. Less positive responses to things like Facebook and Twitter and a not very positive response at that date to the Ning network. So there were some issues with people not understanding it, not um, sort of using their login when they've been sent it, logging in, forgetting their password, forgetting how it all sort of worked and so on. And this is a snapshot um, which was actually presented at our last uh, conference by uh, Jess, actually, about the, the, using, the user sort of statistics of the website at the end of 2011. So this is just, as I'm sure you're all familiar with Google Analytics snapshots, but gives us an idea of how people are, were using our website at that time. So we've recently, uh, uh, sorry, one final thing that was added at the end is the community map. Now, this is another of the outreach um, department sort of initiatives, the idea being that we needed a map interface on our website for people to add their own dots to the map. And this is uh, something that's generated through University College London's Mapping for Change uh, department. Um, some anecdotal evidence in a show of hands at our last conference suggests that this, this is not well used. Um, people don't really understand it, they don't really know what it's there for, um, and it's in fact not actually in, administered by the project at the moment, so we, we, we're slightly archiving uh, that facility at the minute, just to let you know, in case you decide to be suddenly inspired to go and put things on the community map, but please do if you'd like to, we're, 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 <laughs> it would be lovely if someone used it. Um, we've more recently uh, sort of updated and started looking at Google Analytics, and I should just stress at this point that I am not a uh, particularly techie person. I'm relatively new to the world of uh, web and so on, so I'm finding Google Analytics really interesting, actually. I'm trying to sort of unpick its many layers and understand how people are interacting with our site. It uh, requires a lot more time than I currently have, but there's some really interesting uh, data in there. What we can see is that we've got a, rise, a steady rise in the number of people visiting the site, um, a steady rise in the number of new visitors that are coming to the site. But what is noticeable is that people are spending less time on our site. They are looking at less pages, um, and the amount of time that they're spending with us before they bounce off somewhere else is going down. So that's something that we'd like to look at in the future and understand a little bit more about what people are looking at 
and what they're leaving when they're no, no longer finding interesting. Um, a little bit about uh, sort of public involvement with what we've been doing. Uh, we have a Flickr photo stream, um, and as a part of that, we set up a, a group pool, um, which has largely essentially been taking care of itself. There are now over 600 photos in the group pool. Uh, so if people tag an image with uh, the words Thames Foreshore Archaeology, it's pulled into the pool. And there are nearly 40 uh, sort of active members of this pool now, which is really uh, exciting, actually, and really fantastic to see that it's actually the frog membership who are contributing the vast majority of the images that are going into this group pool. Uh, we maintain our own project photo stream, and only a limited number of our pictures are, are, are going in there. So this is very much the public's view of the foreshore. This is what they're seeing, it's what they're recording, and it's what they're putting out there. Um, the frog blog and the Riverpedia sections of our website, where we've been encouraging uh, public uh, input, are also, uh, I think they're absolutely fantastic, we have to have a moment of fluttery pride there. Uh, we've had uh, 38 different authors contribute uh, articles to these two sections. Uh, that's not including any of the staff authors, so those are 38 authors who are members of the public or members of our uh, volunteer group. Uh, that number of articles that they have generated, over 80 articles, represents 30% of the total number of articles within those two sections, which is, I think, an absolutely fantastic thing for a community archaeology project. Um, and something that they should be, we are certainly hugely proud of, and they should be proud of too. A really wide range of different articles representing a huge sort of... Um, sort of area of interest of our group um, and we're always keen to receive more um, we're really looking forward to this sort of part of the website developing further and further. Now one of the issues with writing frog blogs and one of the things that we tried to tackle right at the beginning of the project was because we're using text pattern people can actually uh, have training to write directly into the website um, what we found is that although about 40 people did the training um, with Lorna, their confidence in terms of submitting articles and um, sort of getting them live is very, very low. So they, they do not feel confident in terms of using that level of technology. They are, however, extremely happy to submit a Word article with JPEGs and we upload it for them and make it live under their name. So. It's, it's something that we'd like to bear in mind for the future, whether we can encourage people to be writing in directly, making their own articles live, which is something I would really love to see, or whether they want to continue seeing us as a, a sort of editorial level um, and adding that for them. So, uh, you, you may be aware that we have been doing a survey recently. I apologise for the endless tweets and Facebook messages about it. Um, and I'm very grateful to anyone who has uh, responded to the, the survey request. Um, I'm rather chuffed that we had over 180 responses to the survey, given my rather scattergun approach to getting it out there. So it, that, I'm really quite pleased with that as a result. Um, these are just a few graphs to show our sort of initial um, results from the survey. Again, you can see a strong response to the usefulness of our website, which is absolutely fantastic. So. That seems to be a key part of our project still. Um, very strong, not useful results for the embedded um, things that we use, so Scribd, SlideShare, Vimeo, and so on, which in a way is good, because it hopefully means that people are coming to us directly and using those sort of facilities without going elsewhere or without finding them elsewhere. They're coming to the website and springing out from there. Um, interesting results on the sort of Flickr uh, usage, We've, we've had a huge number of hits on our Flickr photo stream, but that's not really reflected in this, in this graph at all. We've had over 100,000 hits in the last year and a half, so we're nearly up to 180,000 hits totally on our, on our Flickr stream. So it's been a big rise, basically, in people looking at Flickr, but this suggests that people aren't finding it very, you know, as useful as they could. So that's interesting. We may have a, a different audience there who are looking at the photos compared to the people who are looking at the website. Um, Facebook is uh, generally sort of useful, it would seem. Twitter, if you take out the uh, frog responses, goes up in usefulness. 
So our frog volunteer group are still not keen, although I, can, I know there are a couple of frogs in the room who tweet, um, but they are, they're still generally, the response is that they are not keen on using Twitter and Facebook. Um, but when you add in the members of the public, people, uh, yes, Twitter is more useful. So, and we have, again, possibly a different audience on Twitter. Uh, we also asked people how often they visited our site. We wanted to know how often people are actually coming. Um, an interesting number of never visits, a small percentage at the bottom there, which is always good to know. <laughs> um, thank you for taking the survey. If you answered never, it's really kind of you. Um, <laughs> Generally, uh, once a month, once every few months, uh, and uh, it's, it's a reasonable amount of traffic to the website, I think, from the, from the survey responses. Um, and we also asked which sections people were finding most useful, because we are thinking about um, some redesign work. Uh, news and events, by far and away, the most visited and the most useful section, uh, followed by the Frog blog, which is fantastic. Um, <coughs> Possibly surprisingly low results for the about us section. So maybe we, we maybe people know about us and, and we can put that on the front page and we can lose a section there. Um, again, similar results from Google Analytics. Um, most of the traffic going towards the news and events page, the home page. Uh, although we are seeing more people uh, looking at uh, about the about page according to the Google stats. So social media, um, social media we've start, as I mentioned earlier, we've started using in slightly di a slightly different way. So we are trying to engage and interact rather than just broadcast uh, now. Um, I'd like to think that that sort of slightly different approach is reflected in the sort of massive, massive increase in the number of Twitter followers. Uh, at the end of 2011, we had about 500 and we're now well over 2,000. So that is absolutely fantastic. We're also getting lots of responses from people through Twitter, lots of replies, which is really exciting. Um, now we are a part of Museum of London Archaeology. We've also been looking again, considering audiences. Um, it is interesting to note that we have uh, you know, quite a, a smallish, relatively small group of people who are following both us and Museum of London Archaeology. So although we are housed in the same building, we have two rather different audiences there, which is interesting. Um, and Facebook, uh, the group numbers have remained fairly static at around 250, 260. The page has increased massively uh, to about 400 people now. Um, what we're seeing is that a lot more of uh, the conversations are going on within the group rather than on the page. Um, and also I have a, a very short Facebook story which uh, relates to uh, this chat here. In fact, um, I was on the foreshore which is kind of like being in the country, for those of you who don't know it. People go up and say good morning to you, and, and no one thinks you're insane. So you get chatting to people that you don't know. So I walked up to this chap and said, hello, how are you doing? What are you finding? Um, and he said, I'm doing this. I said, I'm from the Thames Discovery Programme. I said, oh, I'm a member of that. And I said, oh, are you a member of the Foreshore Reporting and Observation Group? What's your name? Because we know all their names. And he said, oh, my name's Gary. And I realised that Gary is identifying as a part of the project through being a Facebook member. He's not one of our signed up volunteers, but he has identified with the project and considers himself a member of the project through his membership of the Facebook group. And he's quite active on Facebook and posts lots of sort of images and photos and conversations. So there's an, another potential audience out there of people who are out doing stuff on the foreshore and consider themselves part of our organization, which is really great. Uh, we're also acting slightly as a kind of Friends Reunited. Uh, we had this story, uh, article posted by uh, Mr. Drew about uh, the, the Thames at War. Um, we had a comment on our scribbid from a chap called Barty saying, could he get in touch with Bernard? Uh, it turned out they hadn't seen each other for 40 years, and uh, we put them back in touch with each other. So that's a rather kind of uh, lovely story, but I do like that. Um, and we're also getting uh, increasing numbers of comments on our photos. So people who are, uh, again, potentially not looking uh, for us anywhere else, but are following our, our Flickr photo stream, and are actually starting to report things like, you know, we go out, we look at the artifacts, we look at the structures. We've had a comment back from one of the mudlarkers there saying, uh, well, I've seen someone taking this bits and bits of this structure away. So useful uh, information from members of the public. Uh, finally, just on the frog network, um, we're pleased to see on the most recent survey results that they seem to be finding the network much more useful. Um, Courtney has recently uh, sort of redesigned and we've revamped uh, the frog network to make it uh, more attractive. 
So we can sort of be very proud, I think. There are, again, over 200 photos. We've got over, nearly 190 uh, members, 64 discussion topics, 16 blogs. Um, we've set up an events calendar for them so that they can add their own events into a calendar. So if they're going out on site, they can put that on the calendar and all of the rest of the FROG members can see it. We're seeing good responses to discussion topics, so you know, 20, 30 responses to people having their own conversations online. Um, and again, we've just recently set up a series of, sort of borough-based groups so that people can join a smaller uh, frog group and work on sites that are particularly interesting to them. So what next, very briefly? Uh, as I mentioned, we're looking at a uh, website, uh, Refresh, with our friends at LP Archaeology. Uh, we're going to be encouraging um, and helping uh, the frog become more familiar with using the Ning. So Courtney set up some training sessions which are starting next week, I think it is, yes. Um, we want to better use our embedded services, so make more of the fact that we have these wonderful images coming through Flickr uh, and on Vimeo. Uh, and we also are looking again at putting our archaeological data online. I'm not going to talk about ARC at the moment, but uh, we would like to do something more with it. Um, and just as a final thought, when I was finishing this presentation this morning, uh, I was thinking about archiving and what we do uh, with our site should our project come to a nasty end. Uh, so I'll leave you with that thought, Jesse Cost Preservers. Thank you. Thank you.